What's up, YouTube? We're here with Steve in the Hamilton collection. He's gonna show us your beautiful exotic car collection. Steve, let's see it. All right, guys. So we're gonna start here with the Mercedes SLS AMG. This thing has 563 horsepower. And yes, we are starting with it first. Um, but it is one of my most recent purchases and we had Chicago Auto Pros here vinyl wrap this thing. This awesome purple. Tommy, what color purple is this? Midnight purple. Midnight purple. Um, I knew that off the top of my head. Um, so this thing is all wrapped and ready to go and we did it purple mainly because I didn't have a purple car. So I had every other color of the rainbow except purple. I even have white, black, you name it. Um, so my first purple car and I uh, just want to give you guys a shout out because you did an awesome job. Look at these door sills. Um, this thing sounds like American muscle. It's really a fascinating car because it is German built, but it sounds awesome. I was whipping it around all day yesterday. And uh, every car has its own unique door too. I'm a big fan of spoilers and doors, and this one just has super cool gold wing doors, and uh, that's what really set it apart, but driving it is so much fun. Um, I don't know if we want to get into the Rubicon 392. We'll breeze by it, but this is the wife's daily driver that just happens to have a, a near 500 horsepower Hemi. The dealer swore that this thing could uh, ramp from the factory, and I swear that it does. When you hit the gas and launch it, I swear it gets an inch off the ground. This thing is really, really fun. And uh, I've been driving this thing as much as any of the other cars lately. This is my Ford GT. This is the remnants of the Hamilton collection detail that my crew put on without my permission. And I told him to take it off because it's just too hard to see from a distance. We're doing a new, nice, fun, better decal. Um, the, the lovely doors that stay true to the original Guillotine GT40, yeah. the guillotines. <laughs> Yes, I seriously, when I close this thing, like my head, it, it makes me cringe a little bit. I feel like I'm gonna just chop my head off every single time, but I don't. Seats, extremely uncomfortable. My kids say my kids won't even go on this thing because of the holes, but they don't bug me too much. Regardless, this thing is, this thing is a freaking awesome, fun car. Um, this gets, I don't know, it's top three as far as looks and comments go when I'm driving it around. There's like a special, there's a special bond with this car and certain people. Just really resonates with them. The supercharger is literally like three inches behind your head when you're driving. You just see the pulley spinning right behind you and I freaking love it. This thing has the longest second gear range I've seen. Like you can throw it in second and like 15 and go all the way to like 90 miles an hour. It's insane. Um, I love it. We started the Hamilton collection here a few years ago. I actually bought my first supercar maybe four years ago. It was a Lamborghini Aventador. And um, since then I've bought a bunch more. I was at a car show when I was a lot younger. I've told the story before, but um, I was uh, 16, my wife was 15, and we were uh, looking at a Corvette and it wasn't anything special, but my wife asked if she could sit in the car. The guy said, no. I'm like, really guy, you won't let her sit in your Corvette? And right then and there, I knew that if I ever, if I ever did well, made money, um, had some awesome cars, that I would be the guy that let anybody and everybody sit in it, as long as they're respectful, of course. And so that's kind of, that's kind of my motto. So, I buy these things to share with people and we just love taking them out, going to dinner, doing fun things with them, um, driving the cars hard and, and just um, really experiencing them. Um, I love seeing people's faces. Um, I love just seeing reactions when they get to hit the gas hard. And, uh, and ultimately the, the goal with these is, is to, again, give people access to these vehicles that they can't get access to. And then our other big goal is to make sure that we are um, giving back. So we will never be for profit um, any, any profit that we, that we do make will go to charity, will go to helping people. Um, and you know, the goal of this is, is not to profit at all. So this is my Porsche GT3 RS. It was one of the first couple cars. I bought it on Father's Day, I think two years ago. It's still the only car that I haven't gotten permission yet from my wife to own. True story. Uh, we still joke about it. She's a little salty, but I love her. Um, so this is, I, this is like my go-to car. It is the only car that can withstand an absolute beating at the track. My McLaren 720 is caught on fire. My Ferrari is caught on fire at the track. My Bugatti brakes got bright orange and I lost them halfway. My, my Ferrari brakes also went out. What else, Tommy? Like every car, the P1 did okay, but we babied it. It was good, I babied it, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one, these are workhorses. This is, this is a workhorse. So we did a Dundon crack pipe on this and it is catless, right? Yeah, that's, that's it's gotta catless. be. No. Oh my gosh. So 
the one of the few six cylinders, if not the only six cylinder that I have, right? Everything else, V8, 10, 12, um, 16. <laughs> so the only six cylinder and the loudest car in the freaking collection. I kid you not, and it still has factory headers and it still has catalytic converters. So I'm kind of glad I didn't put aftermarket or, or cat deletes on there because it would have been insane. Um, I, I think the PDK transmission, this thing is the smoothest. This is my go-to car for driving. It is absolutely a blast. It sounds amazing. And I love just whipping this thing around town. And it's got that big wing too. Big wings are my thing. <laughs> the car I put the most miles on, but no, that's cool. This is my Audi R8. So our team, um, our team up at Branded Title did a huge build on this thing. It was a wrecked car and then they made it whole again. And um, because I'm an owner, I decided to buy this car from them really cheap when they were done. And since I got it so cheap, I decided to throw some twin turbos on it with the money that I saved. So it has the Alpha 10 kit from AMS and this thing has over a thousand horsepower at the wheels on 100 octane fuel. Um, I'm, I'm starting to like this thing more and more each day, but it's, it's definitely not my go-to car. But uh, th this, I swear, half the people that come and look at my collection, like, go straight to this car when there's all these other beautiful cars, half the people go to this. So it must be, it must mean something to some people. And side note, it is one of one in the entire world. Uh, they built 999 that year. This is the only one in that color. This is my McLaren 720S. It is the McLaren orange. Um, and honestly, McLaren is probably my favorite brand of car. I have three McLarens. And this one replaced my old 720S that I broke. Um, I was just breaking a little too much, so I got a brand new one under warranty. I would have to say that when these things are tuned with downpipes, it's my favorite car of the collection. I'm just gonna throw it out there. Um, again, with tune and downpipes, it's comfortable. It's extremely fast, lightweight. It's got a good user interface. It has the unique butterfly door. I'm a huge sucker for color matched interiors with the orange belt, orange stitching. And I just really love, I really love them. And it's under warranty, so it won't, even if it breaks like a lot of McLarens do often, um, all the time, constantly, um, it, it will be fixed for free until I tune it and then it voids the warranty. And then lots of carbon too. I threw this uh, DMC carbon spoiler on it. Um, plus side, it looks great. Downside, you can't see out of the back window with this thing up. So that will happen. This is my Lamborghini Aventador. This is the one that started all the supercars. So I had a lot of classics before and I've always been into cars, but this was the first official supercar I got. Um, it is really relatively unmolested. Well, no, I, I lied. It's got a aftermarket carbon fiber spoiler, a titanium exhaust. Um, it's quite loud. Actually, I got it with a, a full crazy loud exhaust. I don't even know what they did differently, but I replaced the exhaust to make it a little quieter. It is still ridiculously loud, but not as bad as it was. Um, we did some aftermarket BC forged wheels on there. And uh, I think the red on the black actually looks pretty freaking awesome. I may be a little bit biased, but I, I think I've done really well on my wheel choices for my vehicles. Again, very biased because I own wheel and tire comes. Nine out of 10. All right, cool. I'll take it. I'll take it. They don't like my McLaren 720 wheels I had on the old one, but I think they looked good. I still, to this day, think they looked good. Yeah. <laughs> you son of a gun. That is, that is really all about the, uh, the Lamborghini. I, it is my least favorite to drive. Um, but maybe I keep it because it has nostalgia and it still allows other people to drive, more people to drive on cruises with us, I guess. Again, this is more of those cars that like, with the R8, I feel like people are drawn to this one naturally. Because they it's have true. no idea that it's not a good driving car. Everybody has, Lam Lamborghini has probably the most recognition of supercar companies, right? I would agree. Um, so this one, I buy a lot of these supercars uh, used because there's huge depreciation that happens after the first year. This is one that I spec'd out totally new from the factory, and you'll see that in the seat contrast where I went heavy on color contrast because, again, I freaking love uh, color matching interiors with exteriors as long as it looks tasteful. So this one I got from the factory. Tommy drove it from Wisconsin in the snow, almost killed himself a few times, and went to the body shop the next day to have this Pandem wide body kit installed. It is the first convertible with a Pandem wide body or any wide body in the U.S. I still haven't seen a convertible wide body yet. Um, it is also the... I think the first car that has air ride on the um, magnetic suspension 
We know that because they had to go through a bunch of troubleshooting with us and it took a while to get it right, longer than it should have. Um, naturally, I put some super wide wheels on the rear and front. These are Rotiform custom built three piece wheels. They're a little dirty, but that's okay. Um, I did yellow on the brake calipers too to, to match and give it a little bit more contrast. Um, I think this thing looks awesome. It turns heads, it's easy to drive. It's my wife's favorite car out of all the cars. Um, and, uh, and then the license plate, she wide. Tried to get she, we tried to get she thick, but, or also thick AF, um, but <laughs> the DMV wasn't a big fan of that. Uh, and speaking of which, we also tried to get Quaalude for the Countach, and I thought they might, I thought we might be able to sneak that through, but no, that was shot down too. Okay, so this is my Lamborghini Countach. I went, flew over to the UK to pick this thing up, um, and uh, I fell in love with it, and it has been, it is a, an engineering disaster, but that's what makes it so fun. Like the windshield wiper range is like four inches, the windows roll down three inches. You can't see out of the back at all. You have to pop out of the door to reverse this thing. There are probably 50 other things about this thing that make it quirky and crazy, but that is why I love it. I love retro old vehicles with weird quirks like that. So um, I drive this thing probably more than Tommy ever would because he hates this thing. Although he's a little taller. I mean, my head hits the ceiling, but his head crushes. There you go. Yep. Tommy's short in all the wrong places. Um, so. <laughs> You got that. Oh, I did have some aftermarket wheels on this, but I honestly decided that we're, they were a little, it's, it was just too funky with aftermarket wheels on this thing. So we went back to the original white ones and I don't think I'll ever change them again. I like these. Yeah, they're a little dirty, but they'll look good in a little bit. P1, this, this is my newest, Tommy? Yeah, right? All right, most recent addition to the collection, tons of carbon, really an awesome vehicle. It is not yet my favorite, but I think it'll get there. Maybe, we'll see. Um, I'm a little pressured because everyone else says it's their favorite, even those that own P1s, but I'm not there yet. We'll see. Uh, but it does sound different than any other car. It has the hybrid drive motor that helps uh, give it some acceleration. It has this little I-pass button on the steering wheel. You're already accelerating really fast, and then you hit this button, and it's like you're in Fast and Furious adding nitrous to it. Uh, give it some acceleration. It has this, this little I-pass button on the steering wheel. You're already... It has a DRS button that you can hit when you're going really fast and it will like lower the spoiler so that you can go even faster. Uh, I love it. All right, well these doors are like regular McLaren butterfly doors. That's what Tommy says. And uh, the seats are very tight. They fit my, my, my wide childbearing hips really tightly. And uh, it, ha it probably has the most things that you have to do when you start this thing up. I swear it takes 45 seconds after you start it to get this thing like sequenced and ready to go but that's okay because it's a lot of fun and it sounds awesome. When it's in race mode, the spoiler goes like full blown erect, like when you're super happy. I'm just kidding. Uh, it goes way high up uh, and it's just like the street presence of this thing. When I first saw it, I'm like, okay, it, it looks kind of like a 720, but when I saw it rolling on the road in race mode, it looked amazing. There's nothing like it on the street. So it was a good purchase and I'm looking forward to lots more fun. We've already put probably, I don't know, seven, 800 miles in this thing in a month. Ferrari 488 GTB, smoky. We put a B-Rogue built custom titanium exhaust on this thing, an aftermarket wing. I think this thing has the most tasteful aftermarket mods. Uh, it has a Vorsteiner carbon aero kit on it. We have some, another Rotiform. I'm a big fan of Rotiform wheels. Um, Rotiform two-tone matte black face with gloss black lip wheels on it. And these are I th maybe the only 22-21 staggered combo. We went pretty big on this. And again, I just think I think the aero kit, the wheels, and the spoiler are the most tasteful that we've done. This vehicle looks awesome. It's top two as far as how the vehicle sounds. Um, it has just a great purr to the motor when you hit it. Um, however, it was smoking. They made us put the factory exhaust back on to try to get it covered under warranty, and then it just stopped smoking. White, thick smoke. So now I have old Smokey getting caught up in the catalytic converters, and so I don't know what's gonna happen with this. We'll see. Um, <laughs> rambling on. What else? Senna, McLaren Senna. Uh, we let Chicago Auto Pros have some, I don't know why I put my sunglasses back on, I'm inside. Uh, we let Chicago Auto Pros do some, uh, have some liberty in the way that they did accents with this. It was kind of, hey, we want some pink wrap on this. Hey, you guys can have liberties, do what you want. And they did an awesome job. So a bunch of like thin pink accents. Um, we covered some of the lime green with pink and then there's just more pink where there wasn't lime green. Looks awesome, we're doing this for breast cancer awareness. We're also wrapping the Bugatti. 
um, and it looks, it turns heads uh, like it is, and then the engine pops and bangs, so that also turns heads. Um, this thing is the most uncomfortable car of the lot, but it, it really, it, it really turns heads. This thing looks like the Batmobile. It looks unlike, I mean, people either love this or they hate this. I think most people love it. I think it looks ridiculous. It has one of the biggest wings I've ever seen in a car. Um, it's really fast. It is built for the track. Uh, it will, if it didn't go into limp mode and break every time I brought it to the track, I would really be able to give better testimony to that, but um, we're refining the tune. It's tuned, by the way. We're refining that and hopefully I can see what this thing's full potential is at the track. And then the license plate. We shouldn't forget all the amazing license plates. I mean, the temporary one on the P1, we have the Datwang, uh, the yellow, I oftentimes say yellow, and then the car's yellow, so it seemed to, it made sense. And then the wolf, because Quaalude was taken. Oh, I'm sorry, Quaalude was rejected. I am Steve from the Hamilton Collection. Thank you for watching and checking out the collection and have a great day.